we're going to hand it over to Kevin. Kevin's going to talk about two resources in particular that we that we did: um, the perspective historical playback, as well as the perspective equipment schedule. So he's going to go through and, and show us both of those. Kevin, I'm going to make you presenter. Go ahead and uh, give us a little introduction to those, please. Absolutely. So. If we take a look at the the first one, so the, the first one, the perspective historical playback here is something that we've had for quite a while, actually. And uh, if we go to our demo, uh, this is at demo.ia.io. It's actually part of our demo project. Uh, so under the real time status, this is the easy way to show it. Um, you have a real time screen right here. These have all the values that are coming through that you're seeing that are streaming real time from the device that we have connected to this. I hit enable playback controller. It adds this playback controller to it. And we can either be in real time, which is where we are right now, or we can switch to a historical mode. And you'll notice if you're observant right here that all of these have just switched now. Um, and we're taking a look at the past hour. You can take a look over the past minute, past day. Um, you can change the design of how this looks um, if you wanted to. And right here, I've seeked back in time to let's say about four o'clock here, 1600, um, hit the play button and I can watch what these values were at that time as they're changing. These graphs are also uh, tied to that as well. Um, and then this ticks up over the time period that I've selected here. Um, and you, you can see as I drag it all updates as well. So basically now I'm looking back about eight minutes ago or six minutes ago, uh, this is how things looked. Uh, so really useful if you're trying to trace back what happened in the past. This component, um, is this exchange resource, this, this is basically a perspective view that you can use as an embedded view inside any of your projects. And I'll show you basically how it works. Uh, over here, uh, when you import it from the exchange, you'll get this playback controller. It's all completely self-contained. You don't have a variety of resources. It's this one resource. And inside here, you choose how you want to configure it. So it will be by default pointed at these example tags. So these example tags don't actually exist, but if I see these tags down here, example one, example two, example three, then I have some values coming out of it, which are null values. If I tie this over to some points here, so for example, ramp zero, I can take that path, put it right in here, um, and then maybe I wanna do ramp one for the second one, and I wanna do ramp two uh, for the third one. And you can see with those, I'm now getting values through for each one of these. And these values are driven by this playback controller. And I can easily just bind these values. So if I use this on another view and I'm showing ramp zero, for example, on a screen, let me just drag it out here and do an LED display, and ramp one uh, and ramp two, then I can do the bindings here that connected directly to that historical playback controller. If I drop this on the screen right here, then it's going to allow me um, basically to see inside my parameters what I just set up there with the tags. I have the values coming back for each and I can bind these values to that playback controller. Uh, and then, so instead of being directly bound to ramp zero, I can bind it directly to that playback controllers ramp zero uh, property there that's coming back. Uh, and now that is historically playing back. Uh, for the sake of time, I won't bind all three, uh, but you get the basic idea. So now this is a live screen, every point on it, um, which is just one point is tied to this. And if I go back in time, that adjusts. If you have everything on your screen, like you have here, you just bind all of these points to that controller and it'll automatically, uh, automatically play back. There's a couple of other properties inside this controller that uh, you don't have to care about any of these. We try to make it as easy and simple and um, uh, basically drag and drop as possible. Um, but if you did wanna play with some of the other parameters, there's a filter param that allows you to change the rendering. Um, you can tie that to filter style for different things. Uh, there's, uh, basically some controls that you can do of this outside of that. So I can control whether or not it's playing, whether it's in historical mode or not. Um, each of the buttons that I can press here, I also have some controls. So you can control this with scripting, for example, or some buttons outside of it. Um, there's the option to either show the mode switch or not. So if you always wanna keep it in historical um, and you don't want to show them that menu item, you can do that. 
Uh, and then there is uh, inside the component itself, well, it'll always tell you what the concurrent time is if you want to bind that to something else outside. Um, and inside the component itself, if you want to do a little bit of debugging to actually see what's happening um, behind the scenes, you can turn on this gateway logger and it's going to give you in the gateway web pages uh, what is happening there. It's going to tell you every time that it is requesting information back. And it has some automatic features like built-in caching that allow you to, um, it's not going to overwhelm the ignition gateway basically with these requests. Um, and you can see that I have a lot of cache hits so far from what I've just been doing there. Um, if I get to a certain point and it's requested a whole block of uh, information um, and I don't have any information for that time period, then it'll switch to cache misses. Uh, and it'll fill in about 10, um, you know, 10 items or 10 rows per uh, every time that it has a cache miss there. Uh, and this total time is in milliseconds. So it normally is super fast for actually executing this, uh, but you can also take a look if you're pulling back a hundred values and you're concerned a little bit about performance, and you might want to change the rate or you might want to uh, um, just, just make sure that you're not um, really heavy on the system. This will give you the information you need for that. So that's the historical playback controller. The other one that I wanted to show this, um, everything we've shown so far is actually up on the exchange downloadable right now. This equipment schedule is um, either uh, going to be up at the end of the meeting here, or it's going to be up shortly afterward. Um, so we just found something inside it that we wanted to make an improvement with, uh, but I wanted to show it anyway, because it is uh, really powerful uh, and if you've ever used Vision before and you've used the equipment uh, scheduler component in Vision, you're going to be very familiar with this idea. Um, so basically in Vision, there is a component that is in here that is specifically for doing that equipment um, scheduling for taking a look and um, being able to set up machines and different times that they're running. Um, you could think of it that way. It doesn't have to be machines. You know, any of these labels can be changed, but that's the idea. Inside perspective, uh, what we wanted to do is provide something that would give you the same functionality. Uh, and so, if you've already, if you're already using it inside Vision, I'll, I'll toss the other couple of things that I have on the screen here. Um, but if you're already using this inside Vision, um, you're going to be very familiar with what this actually looks like there. Uh, and so, so inside here, um, the data sets that you use are the same. The items are the same. Uh, so this is something that you can take the exact data sets that you have coming from the other component or from your existing vision screens. If you're switching over to perspective from vision or if you're providing both interfaces um, and this will add those, those things in, those will be available. Right now it doesn't have the little lead time at the beginning. Um, but that will be added in a later version as well. And other than that, it matches almost exactly. So you can see different items um, and th these could easily be employees or these could be, these could be whatever you want along the side. Um, they're all driven by these different data sets. If I take a look at one of the data sets, for example, the scheduled events, um, these are each one of these event blocks and these are e easily database driven. If you have this type of information inside the database, start date, end date, labels, orders, um, times, things like that. Those are the couple that I wanted to show. So Travis, back over to you. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much, Kevin, for showing those off. Um, I wanna go quickly here on these next two uh, so we can then wrap up today's uh, ICL. But uh, two that I wanna show is a perspective document management one. This is a, a, a resource that uh, I built there to basically it's a simple way to store uh, documents that we can upload to a SQL database and view them and download them and, and, and all of that. So pretty quick thing to, to be able to, um, uh, to demonstrate here. So let me go out of this for a second. Uh, so here's the document management, pretty simple. We, uh, you can go in there, you can add folders. So I can put like a documents folder uh, inside there. I can, I can navigate to that folder. I can upload things. So let's say I wanna upload uh, a logo, or I want to upload, you know, maybe multiple things. I can select both of those PDFs, um, have those added, and ultimately we can come in here. We can uh, change the names of these things here. Um, 
we can uh, change a folder, we can add uh, tags to them. So if I want to go in here and say, you know, tag one, uh, I can add tags, I can then go and search for those tags here, if we want to like one of the guides or tag one. Um, and, and ultimately, I could view that resource, we could view it right here. So there's the image on that one. If I look at this one of you, it's a PDF, uh, all within this, or I can actually open it in another tab, uh, where I can see that document. And of course, we can go ahead and download that. Um, so it gives the the ability to kind of manage things in folders, uh, upload files, you know, add some more information, metadata to it. We can search for various files, and of course, we can we can download them uh, there pretty easily. So that's uh, that one. Just uh, is a nice nice resource that um, uh, allows us to uh, to do that. So so now we're going to turn it over to uh, to Kent, so he can talk about his uh, the the user roster and schedule management components. I'm gonna go ahead and make you presenter, Kent. Great. So. He said, my components, uh, these were created by Ryan Zaxcorn on our application engineering team, and he did a great job. So right now I'm in Vision. Um, Vision had some components uh, that you can see over here on the side, um, specifically for uh, user, schedule, and roster management. So this is user, schedule, and roster. And people for a long time have said, well, where are those components for perspective? Well, today, if I jump over to perspective now, here I've got user management, schedule management, and roster management. And so you'll notice that they are very similar to what you see in Vision. Uh, we did that on purpose. Um, but uh, yeah, these are built out and they're fully usable. So if I come into my browser, you know, I can see them all here. And if I wanted to come in and edit a user, um, then I can come and I can um, you know, do schedule modifications, add contact information, uh, assign roles, edit passwords, all that kind of stuff. And so um, because we are out of time and these resources are, um, you know, familiar to people, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but uh, just know that, you know, these resources are cool because uh, people have, you know, long wanted to be able to customize their user roster and schedule management things to match the look and feel of their sites. Now that these are on the exchange, rather than as um, actual components, you can go in and customize styles, change the look and feel, change the features to however you want. So back to you, Travis. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we are also not going to be building these components in perspective uh, for security reasons. Uh, the APIs exist to be able to modify all this data. So, you know, we uh, this is a great tool that shows how this can all be possible and to customize, like you're saying, Ken. So that's uh, that's great. Thanks for, for that. And good good job to the to Ryan on the team to to and building those. 